Makarov to Stokes, who's onside. What a Here's Sims. It's a good serve this from Southampton. They could finish the job here. It's Shane Long. Um, John, we're recording this with a baby in my arm, okay? <laughs> so I don't know whether you can decide whether or not to um, to keep it. Anyway, right, well, Saints FC podcast listeners, we are recording two seconds after the full-time whistle uh, away against Huddersfield. I have a baby in my left arm. I'm not joking. Um, it, it can't be avoided. She was she cried at full time. I had to pick her up. What can you do? Maybe she's a Huddersfield fan. Yeah, there's every possibility she <laughs> is a terrier. Well, she certainly cries right one, don't you, pal? Anyway, right. Um, f- f- thoughts at full time, mate. What do you think? Again, a win. Amazing. I think how better do they look? Not just better organised, but how much better do they look in terms of the one touch football they play, their decision making, the kind of. Uh, their their ability to kind of get things moving faster. Um, there's a huge amount to like there, and I think you know again it's a it's a win. It's three goals, first yeah. win, first consecutive wins for twenty months. I, can we? I, I when when the commentator said that because you try and bury these things in your psyche, I couldn't quite believe it. I turned to you and I um, I felt a little bit ashamed. But we're back in the game now, mate. This is unbelievable, isn't it? Two wins, two wins, six goals in two games, you know? One, one of the things the commentator said was incredible. We, we didn't score three goals under Mark Hughes. Yeah. Uh, and now we've done it <laughs> twice in three under Hassenfuhl. Uh, incredible. And I think also the goals are good quality goals we're scoring. I, I, yeah. You know, even Danny Ings' penalty is, is, is really good. I think there's a lot to lie here. Redmond looks like he's playing with a lot of freedom. Hoiberg... Sadly, he's been for the next game, but oh, yeah. looks like he's dominating it. Even players like Yoshida. Yoshida looks back. He looks re- reinvigorated. Yeah. You know, Bednarek, quietly good. Vestergaard looks like the player we signed. Um, and bear in mind, we we played today with that three first team, first team players you'd expect to play. Yeah. In Bertrand, yeah. Cedric, um, and, and, and Lamina. And, uh, you know, but there's an argument that keep the team as it is yeah no I no, I think that's what we did isn't it because we starting lineup came out it's, you know same 11 against Arsenal and that was always a positive and he looked at the bench you know what is it um, Ra- Ramsey Ramsey yeah and uh, Johnson and uh, Abafemi you're thinking blimey Charlie you know what is this is like transit this is what has happened within two weeks at Southampton and to win 3-1 away and admittedly that's Pearl saying she can't believe it either um it, admittedly, like to win three one away, that that is yeah. that's glorious. But should we talk about the goals? Yeah, let's. So the first goal, yeah, was a wonderful pass. The sort of <laughs> hey, Paul, I agree. The kind of defence splitting pass that uh, that we saw Hoiberg deploy last week, yeah, uh, so successfully at Arsenal. This time it's Redmond running on it, <laughs> and what a finish from Redmond. Sorry, I had to I had to have Paul um, ch- chime in there because you know she's a pro. But no, that that finish. I meant that ball through as well. That ball through from Hoiberg. I mean, God, talk about goals with like defence splitting. But the finish was, that's, and his face, Redmond's face was like one of like, well, yeah, like I'm in heaven. And that's, oh, is that all I need? Is that all Redmond needs? It's like, yeah, that's all he needs. It's wonderful. It's he's, beautiful. He's got a goal today. He's got an assist today. I think you'll see, I, I, I've said for a few, Redmond is, will get in the England squad by the end of this year. He that's is a big, player. that's bad. He's been playing brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. He's been playing brilliantly. And if you think about it, he's a winger. He's judged on goals and assists. Yeah. And he's been playing with 
incredible confidence himself, but he's not had any luck with the ball going to the back of the net. Yeah. And he's been playing with strikers that haven't really been able to put the ball in the back of the net. Both of those things are changing. So yeah. it was a fantastic finish and yeah, used the pace on the ball just to slam it home past oh. the, the hardest field keeper. It was so fit because, I mean, previously that's going to go into Rosette or whatever. Yeah, or, or bounce off it. the post or whatever. Yeah, but a little bit rubber the green almost. But we yeah. created our luck there, didn't we? Yeah, so, we managed the game to that point. But talking about creating our own luck, that second uh, goal, the penalty... Um, I, I, that was a lovely siding challenge from the uh, Huddersfield centre-back. So quite thankful for that. But the Ings, who Danny really, I didn't even know he was on the, I knew he was on yeah. the pitch, but he was pretty much, you know, vacant. But that finish was sublime, wasn't it? Yeah, I think in many ways, very similar to Brighton at home. You know, 1-0 up, thoroughly deserved. Uh, opposition team come out and go hell for leather in the second half. But we get a kind of a bit of a cheap penalty. Very similar to the penalty we got against Brighton. Again, Danny Ng scores it. But the difference this time, isn't it, is the mental strength of the team. Yeah, like, no, absolutely. That you believe that now. You believe their mental strength. Even in what we now like, less than two weeks into the Hassan Hootel era, is stronger than it was under Hughes. Well, that is mental to me. Like, genuinely, I, I think I'm struggling because I'm quite a negative person in terms of results. I'm always... I don't, I don't know where that comes from. But... Um, I think it's almost mad to think we are in a situation two weeks ago, three weeks ago, where we were, yeah, you know, we would no way would have won against Huddersfield 3-1 away. And now we were completely changed. It's like you said, we're winning. We're first to the ball. We're pressing. We're really confident. And it's the it's the one-touch passing. It's, yeah. the, it's the positivity to try and release players yeah. all the time. Now that... It would be okay. We haven't scored. We would talk about the third goal. Perhaps we should talk about my. N- I, I, I like the one touch. Don't get me wrong, but I think there's a time and a place for it. And when we were two 0 up and we were really looking to go forward to really kill the game, that was you know positive and what have you. But sorry, Pearl is really kicking off in the background, isn't she? Yeah. So I mean, as as well, I, I, you know, I really enjoy the fact that we are one touch football, looking forward heads up and feeling really confident because we do have the players to do that. My only problem is when we're trying to see the game out be professional and we mess around essentially and, and when we don't yeah. look we suddenly become the team that we were. There was definitely you can't argue against it, 15, 20 minute period in that second half where we looked like the old Saints of three weeks ago. Yeah, I I'd, I'd agree with you there. Oh, well but I do think as well we have to think we were away, we were winning. Teams are going to kitchen sink us. You know yeah. that's what they're going to do. They're going to throw everything at you when you are, uh, you know, when you're when you're when you're when you're winning at their place. And I think Saints manage the game. If you look as well, like it's fine if they do that. If our defence looks like can hold up to it, and mm. Yoshida, a player that you know we love but maybe hasn't looked up to it, looked great today. Vestergaard looks like the player we signed. Like every time that ball goes in, Vestergaard is on the end of it. Like yeah. you know, careering out of defence even to lay. Good chances. He on. he was really talented. Really, today. really good today. Yeah. So like, it's fine. Yeah, they can kitchen sink us, but you know, with the players we've got, Danny Ings, Nathan Redmond, Oberfemi, we can hurt people. Yeah. So that third goal, um, Oberfemi. Now, for for me, I I I was saying to you, can we bring on? Can we take off uh, Ings and bring on Lamina? So he takes off Ings and brings on Oberfemi, and I'm like, what do I know about football? It was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah. I think what was clever was if he'd have brought on um, a midfielder or even Charlie Austin, all it would have done was it would have been emboldened Huddersfield. It would have made them feel that like, yeah, you know, because Charlie Austin, you know, might get a chance. He might score. He also might not. You know, all it's going to mean is they're just going to keep coming back at us. Yeah. And with Oberfemi, you've got someone with pace, you know, so they can't commit too many men forward. They've always got to be worried about mm. the counter-attack. And, and to be fair to Oberfemi, you know, he missed a, he missed a bit of a sitter. Yeah. Two or three minutes before that. So he dust himself down with such an accomplished finish. Brilliant assist as well by Redmond. Like everything the new Nathan yeah. Redmond is, not giving up, tenacious, tackling back. Great clinical assist. 3-1. Yeah. Job done, boys. Yeah, and the youngest goal scorer ever to score for Southampton since Dexter Blackstock. And I, 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 I vaguely remember him. What happened him. to Dexter? Maybe, I don't know, maybe he was sold to Arsenal. Is he at Sheffield United? Like a lot of the Saints guys. Probably Billy Sharp. But yeah, like a great finish. And also, again, more competition up front. Yeah. Like now we got West Ham at home 
on Thursday. Yeah. Now you've got Charlie Oss on the bench who scored two goals recently. You've got Oberfemi who scored tonight. You've got Char- got Danny Ings who scored twice today. Yeah. Uh, sorry, he scored today. He scored twice against Arsenal. A lot of competition. All of a sudden, Saints misfiring forwards are actually looking pretty damn good. It is pretty... It's, it's weird to say it, but... What a difference a Ralph makes. What a difference a Ralph makes. You know, Put them like... all in the rabbit hutch. Put them all in the rabbit hutch. It's un- it's unbelievable, isn't it? And like, I mean, yes, we did fall back on to old ways, but uh, I, I mean, it was just a wonderful smash and grab performance, wasn't it? Really, all yeah, in all. Yeah, but they fell into old ways, but they mentally stood up this time, yeah. didn't they? Like before, they would have caved. This time, they were there. Every ball, they tried to win it, and I think that key thing, like with Redmond, Armstrong, they've got genuine outlets. Yeah, yeah. they've got players that can turn the can turn on the ball and attack. Um, and you know, positionally today, they seem to be bang on the money. They they've got this five three two. They know what they're going to do. Yeah. The funny thing is, Mark Hughes had all pre season to play with a five three two, and he abandoned it after sixty minutes. <laughs> Hassan Hill has been there, what like two weeks. Yeah. And the players look like they've never played anything else. So yeah. you know, long live King Ralph. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. I mean, just to just to sort of maybe quickly just go through back to front I thought McCarthy had a really great game I think you're looking at defenders who was your man at the back I think Vestergaard yeah you've got to give the guy credit like we've slaughtered him enough in the past but like my god he he looks like this the player that Saints hoped they'd sign you know like almost a bit Van Dyke in terms of every ball that goes into that box Vestergaard challenges and wins and yeah all right they're not always the best header but he wins them Mm. every single time and yeah he's going to play better forwards than he played today yeah and he looked way um, more accomplished with his feet didn't he he did going um, and pa- passing forward but even like it was silly like the basics like the when we had to hack it away we didn't hack it away to a midfielder we proper hacked it away into touch you know like two thirds of the way up the pitch absolutely you know up to the halfway line yeah the basics it's amazing isn't it like you've got the exactly the same players that Hughes had they look revitalised and you know they go again on Thursday yeah. at home against West Ham. If they beat West Ham, it's a big if. West Ham are a good team yeah. us today, but you never know. If they beat West Ham, then all of a sudden the season looks a lot different. Yeah. And your man your your man in the middle, who's your favourite midfielder tonight? Romeo looked brilliant. Yeah. Like Romeo looks great. Romeo looks like the Romeo of old. You know, he lost yeah. his way, didn't he, under Hughes, but now he looks he looks like that destroyer. Who I've got a little smile picked? on my face. I've got a little smile on my face. No, Good. you're right, you're right, because Romeo played a really quiet but very significant role tonight, and I think that really speaks volumes because, uh, I mean, I would have said um, Hoiberg just because of the assist and because he was the general. Mm. Um, I think he lost his, his mind at slightly towards the end to pick up that, that booking. I don't think it was absolutely necessary. It was right down I the other end of the Huddersfield half. But um, sometimes you just need to remind players, you know, you, you know you're going to miss the next match. Just just chill out. You've got yeah. literally three minutes to play, if that. But anyway, fine. Uh, I thought for me it was Hoiberg, but I, I also take your point. I think Romeo did a really understated, wonderful job there. I um, think it, what's funny, isn't it, as well, is like, we've not been able to defend for Toffee, so just play more defenders. Yeah. And then play Romeo in front of them as a defensive minded midfielder, and then let the forwards do their thing. It, it, it sounds so silly, but it's kind of worked. Yeah. It, it's, it's, if it's, sim- it's, it's simple football works. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. see these players, like, I think there was a lot of case in point with this match. Yeah, it's, it's away from home, it's a smash and grab. I would have, you know, I think we would have. I think we would have really benefited from being able to keep the ball in the Huddersfield half for more than, say, five seconds and pass it around a bit. But obviously that wasn't for today. That's for at home against West yeah. Ham when we beat them 4-0, you know. <laughs> um, that but would be yeah. something. And then looking forward, uh, forwards rather, uh, it's your choice between... Um, I mean, I'd say Nathan Redmond, but you can't really. Danny Ings didn't really... I mean, brilliant yeah. from Danny Ings. They didn't really do... Didn't wasn't in the game that much. But yeah. obviously, you know, people say, don't they, about goalkeepers when... The mark of a great goalkeeper is when he doesn't have to do anything mm. and then he steps up and he, his concentration is on point. And you could say the same about Danny Ings. Didn't really have much of the ball in the first half today, but when mm. it mattered, you know, was able to step up and stroke a brilliant penalty past the keeper. Yeah, and I, yeah, it was a shame he didn't really kick on tonight. But I mean, who cares? It's like he's you said. He's got a goal. Yeah, he's got a goal. That's all that matters. That's he's, what his, his job is on the pitch, score a goal. Yeah, and he's, he's, he's done his job and... It's funny, isn't it? Because Redmond playing off him, it it was 
it, I did, and far more through the middle as well tonight, mm. Redmond, I thought, you know, as opposed to the, to the left and the Redmond right. Redmond hurts people. Yeah. Like, he, you know, you see, he just, he's playing like a man possessed at the moment. Yeah. It's, I, it's brilliant to watch. And, and what's nice is that he's kind of doing it all season, but mm. now he's actually getting his rewards. Yeah. And so looking, I suppose looking forward without Hoiberg uh, for the next match, you're, who do you think is going to drop in then? It'll be Lamina. Yeah. Which is good. It's a kind of, like for like, mm. you know, like we don't have to change the system. We don't have to change what we do. Lamina comes in. It's another box to box ball winning mm. midfielder who can play a pass and, and bring the ball out of defence. Yeah. So like, if you think about it, that it, it kind of the the system works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just hope he doesn't go to PSG. That would be. That's what they're saying. That'll be upsetting. But maybe if he goes to PSG, we'll get like you know our money back on say. Um, Elanusi, Elanusi, and all that, and maybe make who? a signing ourselves. Exactly who? Bless his heart. But you know, whatever happens, Lamina ain't going to PSG before Thursday night. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. All right. Well, that, that was um, that's pretty much us done tonight because it's um, a quick fire podcast. It's been great to be able to to get one out to you. I don't know whether you were happy or sad about having little baby Pearl in there for the first half. But we had little choice. It's just the way it is, you know. It's a democracy of opinion. It, you know, and I think she's a beautiful girl. I think she's going to have a lot to contribute in the future. Maybe we'll get her back on the podcast, you know, next season perhaps. You know, what do you think, mate? She can't do a you know, worse job than us do. Yeah, so that, that, that is, is true. Let's be realistic. Or more importantly, me, because you are far superior. No, never. Total, total Southampton analyst legend, no Tom way. Parker. Yeah. Um, Merry Christmas, I guess, is the next It thing. is, isn't it? Merry Christmas. Uh, what are you doing for Christmas? Going to my fiancé's house, her yeah. parents' house, and then my parents' house. So, so just standard 4 4 two, yeah. your parents, her parents, build, get build, pissed. Build from the back at her parents, and then <laughs> counter-attack at mine. Uh, what, what's in the counter-attack? Ales? Uh, turkeys. Tur- turkeys. Turkeys. Live uh, living turkeys? Or? If they have to be, then they will do that. Are you yeah. going to butcher them? I'm not ruling anything out. Of the okay, interesting. So it's going to be a San Miguel and live turkey shoot. Yeah. All right. For me, it's going to be um, American IPAs and uh, a live vegetable shoot because I don't eat meat. Wee! Mm, pescatarian. Um, but yeah, look, thanks so much for listening this year. We, uh, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of John. It's it's been amazing having you guys here for 2018 into 2019. We're probably going to win the Premier League at this rate. We can't not. I mean, if you think about it, currently under Hassan Hill, in a full season, we're going to win 26 for 38 game season. I can't which believe is, it. We're going yeah, to win that's, the that's going to win the Premier League. Yeah, it's incredible next year. I mean, I said it last podcast. I think I'll say it again. We are going to win the Premier League. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you want to rate us, please do so on iTunes. You know it helps us so much, and it helps the whole fandom of Southampton Football Club and if you want to get on Twitter we are Saints FC Podcast yeah, uh, yeah and yeah on Twitter yeah and then email us at SaintsFC Podcast at gmail.com boom that's it and it's uh, Tom Parker 81 I believe on uh, mm. Twitter is it mm. and for me I am pirate underscore st you are Yes. yes brilliant all right well that on that note thank you so much for following us and we'll see you in 2019 holy shit happy new year happy christmas everyone bye bye christmas <laughs>